order the December 4th uh, Council Workshop at 6 o'clock. And um, to start things out, I'd like to mention that this is a discussion amongst councillors on the outcome of the election, on the amendment to the uh, Animal Control Ordinance. I would ask that the everybody in the crowd um, please uh, keep your comments till the 7 o'clock uh, meeting where you'll have time to comment on anything the council will say tonight. This is just a workshop uh, amongst the councilors to talk about the issue. Um, one thing I'll mention, I'd like to thank all the hard work and volunteers that brought this issue to a vote of the citizens of Scarborough. It's been a very heated issue on both sides and we've received input from um, both, both sides of the issue. And I uh, thank you for that, commend you that, that you did a lot of hard work. So to start things off um, with the discussion, um, who would like to go first? Knowledge uh, Councillor Donovan. I'll be happy to start. Uh, I think this is a good forum for us. I think this is what will be helpful for people to really just give some give and take, some honest discussion. It's more informal. I like it. I'm, I'm really glad that uh, the chair chose to have this, particularly after the vote. Uh, I think if you said what conclusions can you draw from the vote? I would say I'm very confident in saying that 75% of the people voted no and 25% of the people voted yes. Uh, beyond that, there were, in my view, a lot of reasons why people voted one way or the other. Uh, some people who voted no felt the ordinance went too far. Other people felt like the thing had not been properly aired or was incomplete. So they were, and I, I've heard, I heard those said by many, many people going door to door during the month of October. People who voted yes were actually in favor of the, uh, 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 the ordinance as written. Uh, others said, well, we have a sense that the council has said it's work is not finished and it needs to uh, uh, identify those designated areas that would be appropriate for dogs to be uh, off leash. Um, the one thing that I heard from both yeses and noes, and I kept hearing it throughout the, before I knew that they were going to vote yes or no because I just saw them at the doors. And I heard it again today from, from a bunch of no's, but the one common thing was that it would be quite appropriate to have plover protection, a plover protection ordinance in place. And, and that's sort of where I think it would be appropriate for, for us in terms of process and where we're going uh, to, to kind of start. Uh, I really think we ought to move forward on two fronts and how procedurally we do that uh, I think is open to debate amongst us. I think the council should make a decision on the plover issue promptly. Uh, why do I think that? Well, first and foremost, it's been fully aired. We've been four to five months uh, discussing this. We've had first readings, we've had second readings, we've had ordinance hearings, we've had public uh, hearings before the council. Um, I also think that delaying risks pushing us into territory, dangerous territory as a town. And I think more than anything, I think that our job is to say, make sure that our town is respected and acts in a dignified manner. Uh, and I think that uh, in this particular case, uh, we could find ourselves uh, with uh, an adversarial relationship with the federal government that we would, one, be 
very dangerously likely to lose. We have a legal opinion from our counsel. This is a prominent law firm by a specialist in this area who analyzed the law. I read all the same cases that she reported on and that were reported by other counsel that have spoken. And I feel pretty strongly she's right. We would be at risk of losing uh, an action, much the way the town of Plymouth, Massachusetts lost an injunction action and was told, you, can, you are prohibited from enforcing your ordinance. Now, to me, I go, why would we ever want to get in a position where we would potentially be enjoined, spend potentially, and these things are extraordinarily expensive uh, to defend, uh, uh, six figures or more, hundreds of thousands of dollars potentially. Uh, it would make the fine look like chicken feed. Uh, so I think that all of those things say we should be acting now. Uh, towns have had their beaches closed. Uh, that struck me, and, and just you just go and look at uh, Google the Cape Cod beaches that have been closed because of this condition. Why would we ever allow somebody else to take control of our destiny? I think our, our town should be controlled by uh, us, the voter input, uh, and what they're telling us is get this plever thing behind us. Uh, and lastly, we're being asked to stop endorsing an ordinance provision that promotes uh, the elimination of an endangered species. Just think about that. Is that where we want to be as a town? That to me is nuts. Uh, uh, I'm not a big biologist or environmentalist, but I, I do know that I would never want to put my town in a position where they are uh, thumbing their nose at uh, uh, an, uh, the Endangered Species Act. I just think that would be inappropriate. Uh, the second front, the f first one obviously is, I think we need to act promptly on the, on the plever uh, condition. There are a whole bunch of other issues. The ordinance that was overturned had a town-wide lease law. Uh, uh, that issue is on the table. Uh, where can dogs be off-leash in our parks and our uh, land trust land, uh, our beaches? Because I think I've heard the, the views of other council members that we absolutely intend to have that happen. And I feel that way too. I, I, I ran and always answered the question at the door, the least intrusive ordinance provision necessary that respects everybody. Uh, and you need to take everybody into account uh, when, when you're talking about public places. And in public places, if there's a lot of the public around, then probably dogs on leashes makes a lot of sense. When there's, and I always use this example, I live at Higgins Beach. No one at Higgins Beach in December on the beach. It's cold. Uh, and so, well, it doesn't seem like an inappropriate time to let dogs run, uh, run free on the beach. Uh, so there are a lot of issues. Uh, how to enforce. Always hear about enforcement. Everyone says, well, let's just enforce our laws. And, and I feel pretty strongly that that's all. So those issues all come into the mix. And the traditional approach is the ordinance committee would look at it. But in this case, we had an ordinance overturned. It's a hot issue in the public's eye. Maybe an ad hoc committee has an important role here that, that would assist us to get, you know, a sense of, uh, uh, of where the town would like us to be on this. Whether these two issues, clever protection and all the other ones that are, are, are separate, uh, 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 travel on the same track or not, I don't know. That's, an, that's a question for us to answer today. Uh, uh, I see the first issue as having some urgency. Uh, uh, and I see the second one as perhaps uh, requiring a little bit more airing, a little bit more uh, a public input and vetting. Uh, and so let's see, that, that's where I'd be. I'd be listening to the discussion as to where, where would people think we ought to end up on this. Thank you. Okay. Um, Murray. Um, 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I agree with Mr. Donovan uh, that we have two separate issues here, separate but somewhat entwined. Mm -hmm. um, the issue of the plovers and federal government um, is something that's important to address sooner rather than later. Um, and I think we could discuss how soon is soon and what makes sense. Um, but I know that as an elected official for the town of Scarborough, I have an obligation to the taxpayer not to be spending their money, f I won't use the word foolishly, but in a way that doesn't need to be spent. And I feel that we've worked out um, an agreement with the service, I'll call it the service for shorter term, um, that makes a lot of sense in many ways. Not everyone's going to be happy with it, but I know that as uh, Councilor Donovan pointed out, it went through hearings, it was vetted, it was talked about, and was presented um, as an ordinance for vote. So I think that I'm hoping we can come to an agreement on how we're going to deal with the issue of protection of the plovers. And I agree with uh, Councilor Donovan on all those points. The second issue is the issue of, and what do we do about dogs in town, if you want to call it that broader issue, uh, in public places. Uh, I agree. I've had discussions with various counselors also, and we seem to be pretty much in agreement that there should be places for, and times, for dogs to not need to be leashed, to be able to be running. And what that means yet, we need to decide as a council and have a good discussion about that, about what, what that meaning is, what that timing would be, or what whatever. That to me is a process. Again, I'm in support of an ad hoc committee that uh, is um, fairly limited in the number of people who are involved in it, very specific, including some town um, um, offices that may be involved, such as community services, for example, I, I can think of off the top of my head, um, that's time limited and is given a specific set of instructions as to what it is we as a council are looking for them to give back to us. So that's the direction I Yes, going as a council. Mm -hmm. Jessica? Um, so I'll chime in too. Uh, as much as I would like to sort of think that we have an infinite amount of time to, to continue to work on this, I think realistically we will probably hear shortly from Fish and Wildlife as to where we stand with them at this point. We are now currently against our negotiated agreement um, by the sheer fact that the ordinance is overturned. Um, certainly, we had did, had these discussions before um, and were fairly well advised that if it were to come to the point that we go to the court system, we were advised that we were talking in a ballpark figure of about 200,000 um, for more or less in their legal opinion to tell us we are wrong and you will do with us anyway. Um, as far as that next segment, um, I do agree that an ad hoc committee is probably extremely beneficial. Um, most people will agree that there's a, a definitive amount of people that need to be involved in those discussions. Um, certainly, some of the properties that you know we've kind of kicked around in just conversations um, realistically are not town properties. They're land trust property that's their own separate legal identity. Um, you have Eastern Trail, again, they're their own separate legal identity. They govern themselves and have their own rules. So those are some folks that will need to come in on the discussion. Um, certainly we control our own beaches and, and, and you know, we can have the say for those areas, um, but they really need to be included in the whole picture and the whole discussion. Um, because essentially we could say Fuller Farm is our designated area and Land Trust tomorrow can say we don't allow dogs. Um, so, you know, there are other people that, that need to come to the table as well. Um, certainly I do not think it would need to be a long-term committee. I think that's something that could be done in a relatively short amount of time. Um, off the top of my head, I agree, you, whoever our staff department is to oversee designated areas, if that's the route we want to go with, um, whoever's going to be overseeing it, whether that's community services, public works, um, certainly, you know, some 
folks from dogs would be appreciated, I'm sure, in those discussions. Um, and again, uh, as far as the enforcement goes, you, you know, again, maybe somebody from PD or, or something to kind of add some insight about safety. Um, so, and I think there would be a dynamic there that, that we'd really want to think about and, and make sure that we're really getting a good representation from, from each. Um, I wish we had more to know about what was going on with where Fish and Wildlife is at. Um, I don't know if maybe you have any insight to that at this point or yeah, it's can, still too early. Or yeah, I can report I had conversations with the folks in the regional office here. Uh, I didn't speak directly to the solicitor's office, who are the folks that we've been dealing with uh, as part of the settlement uh, agreement. Um, they were quite clear. I think they did talk to the solicitor's office uh, in advance of this vote, and kind of anticipating this outcome. Uh, I think they're willing to take a wait and see attitude, uh, depending on the direction the council takes. And I, I don't think it necessarily needs to be decided exactly tonight, but sometime in the relative in the near future, an indication of the direction the council wishes to go. Um, they're willing to wait and allow that to happen. Uh, in the alternative, if the council chooses to take a different action, whether it's to uh, maybe offensively or affirmatively defend ourselves against this action, I think that would prompt them to take uh, uh, a contrary position or a response to that. So I think the ball's in our court in the near term. And as near as I can tell, April 1st is kind of the, the target date that we need to be looking toward. Uh, we're still not in, out of compliance until that date comes. I'm not sure if that's helpful. It's not. Mm -hmm. Time timetable is helpful. Good to know that we don't have to be, I mean, tomorrow, I, I guess. I mean, if there's but just to back it up, just so we all appreciate, if, if the outcome of an ad hoc committee is a series of recommendations, some of which mm -hmm. require action of council and amendments to the ordinance, mm -hmm. that process in the, of itself, and given the interest in the matter, I would suggest you give it its normal hearing, mm -hmm. obviously first and second reading in public hearing, that process takes at least two meetings, more than likely three, to do it uh, correctly, mm -hmm. uh, to give it full hearing. So just back up from that April 1st date, that means the council should have these recommendations in hand by you know, mid to late January, I would say, so there can be some conversation uh, whether or not the ordinance committee is folded into this and works and, and comes up with a final set of recommendations. So. Time is somewhat of the essence. I don't think it's uh, something, again, you have to decide tonight, but uh, the sooner we get a, some consensus of direction, I think the better. I, I personally, I have a hard time seeing the wrong, doesn't make that right, but it does make it just going to be 
an improvement <coughs> on what was presented prior. Um, and it was pretty loud and clear. The three quarters, no. And the one quarter, yes. It's not worth our time to deliberate whether the vote was right or wrong. It was the vote. That's it. I do think we need to take a little time in discussing this openly, nicely, and it's not a case of <coughs> the counselors being against any one thing or another. We need to bring up the pros and cons. Uh, as Richard said in the beginning, and I think we all, all wholeheartedly agree, although I don't speak for myself, there's got to be some bend, and probably 100% of the no's and 100% of the yes's aren't going to be happy with the outcome, because it's just too much of a mix to go one way or the other. I can I can understand that the, the, the people with the dogs want land identified as they can use it as they see fit. Um, the, the one stickler that I see in this whole thing is I agree that we've got to, we should get on the mark, not close to it, on the mark with the fish and wildlife. I don't want them crawling up my neck and uh, putting a tattered eye on the town. I think it's important to keep, because I don't, I, I don't think what they're asking for is ridiculous or pushy. And if, if they want dates and times, I agree with Katie, I've sort of gone around the, around the bush. I, I'd, I'd like for, for, for Tom or the legal aspect come back to us and tell us what do the times have to be that are going to bring us what they think, or not what they think, what they're stating is going to be within their guidelines. I don't want to have them riding on us and have something against us. Now, I think it should be reasonable, but I also think they have the last word in what we do. There comes a time where you got to stop fighting. And you got to understand, not agree with, but understand what they're looking for. They're looking for the plovers. Period. So we've got to come on the mark with what the Fish and Wildlife Service want. I think it's whether we like it or not. I'm not saying I like all of it, but I believe we've got to ad ad adhere to at least what they want. But in conjunction with that, we've got to take into root thoughts what that 25% of the vote was looking for also. It's not like they don't count. Um, I think some people would be amazed at some of the emails that all the counselors have received that have been on the other side. They, they are as outspoken, knowledgeable, reliable as the people on the no side. And that's okay. But we've got to blend it. Um, I do know that the VIPs, which is part of the police department, will give their time two, three, four days, nights during the summer season, which doesn't cost us a dime. That's a volunteer organization with authority. And they're willing to put time in also. So it's just another category of people that will help be, I hate to say, <coughs> the least. But that's what we got to call it. 
So that's basically where I stand. Thank you. If, if I could, I'd just like to see if I could clear up any ambiguity. In all of my dealings, there really has been no doubt in my mind what is necessary to satisfy the needs of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and that is simply to not allow to require dogs on leash eight, eight feet or less between April 1st and August 31st. That's been their position consistently throughout, and that continues to be uh, the, the, the standard that they are looking for us to achieve. 24 hours? Yes. I wouldn't say it's just fish and wildlife. I would say throw in Audubon and all the other information that we're getting that we're supposed to be using to create this ordinance. And I think some of those things have been misleading. Perhaps not. Yeah. That's, that's not quite the correct word. I just think that we've got numerous states, numerous times from each different group, and then they want us to turn around and put out this ordinance, and it's hard when there's not a lot of backing that up. Hard to have that argument with people when we're getting some information and we've got some town people coming to us and saying, well, we read this off of this, and they're literally showing it to us, and you read it and you go, oh, yeah, okay. Um, so it makes, it makes it difficult to come up with something that works for everybody. I don't, I'm not, definitely not blaming Fish and Wildlife fully on this whole thing. I quite frankly, I have some responsibility in the whole thing myself. So. I just think that, I guess that kind of leads to where I was going with, I feel like we need to take a couple steps back. We sure. just had the vote yesterday. Um, I'm so glad that we're finally actually sitting down with everyone and Tom um, and as a council for the first time and being able to talk through some of this stuff because we never get this opportunity. And it's critical. Um, one of the biggest complaints we keep hearing is that people are, think that there's stuff not being said in the public and they feel the need. That has to stop, and I'm hoping that this is our, one of our first steps in hopefully moving forward with that. And it's going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. People, there has to be some stuff from us, and there has to be some stuff from everybody else, too, for us to make this relationship work. And I hope that people are willing to do that. Yeah. Um, I also agree that there's two issues here. There's always been two issues. There's always the plover issue, and then we stuck in the <coughs> leash law issue at the end. Um, and the plover issue, in, in in my opinion, is pretty much fully defined. I don't think there could be a date here and a date there. Um, one date for sure is August 30. 31st is not a valid date, in my opinion. It's got to be at least September 15th. And the reason for that strictly is that the last first two weeks in September are weeks where people are vacationing on the beaches. And you, you can't have dogs running loose on the beaches those two weeks. But other, other than... Other than... Uh, a date here and there, I think we've gone through the process of really airing this out. We've aired it out with our attorney. We've aired it out with uh, uh, Fish and Wildlife. Uh, I think the, in my opinion, the uh, ordinance that was on the table on October 2nd, prior to making the infamous amendment, is probably still and very valid. I also agree that we don't sit here tonight and say, this is what we do. You know, we've got we've to let things settle. I'm going to think about it, but I don't think we have to spend much time on that. What we have to spend more time on are the other issues. Um, and then it becomes a question, do we have an ad hoc committee, or do we just turn it over to the ordinance committee? <coughs> Um, I'm not too sure about which way we, we go, <coughs> but uh, that would that would be the that would be the second one. And we have uh, we have all winter long, you know. The winter is open to, for the dogs to run under voice control. Remember that voice control. 
where I stand. Okay. Well, you know, um, nothing about this process of what this council is talking, discussing right now would I like to see rushed at all. Um, this, we still have time, and it's good that we're starting now because if we do form a committee, it's going to take time to digest that, receive names. Uh, we need to set up a set of goals for that committee, and this all takes time. And then, like Tom said, we're talking um, three meetings uh, before anything's accomplished. And we have to keep in mind we still have other uh, tasks um, to handle, such as budget and of the business of this town. Um, we still have to keep the, we have ordinances that uh, need to be looked at, uh, such as cell phone towers. So there's a lot of business at hand. So um, if this is what this council decides to do, um, and then um, we have to be, uh, you have to be deliberate and we have to get this um, going to speak. Now I'll just speak briefly on um, my feelings and I've said all along I, o I always wanted to honor the will of the people in the vote. Um, uh, that, that said, that's it. Um, you, you brought up a lot of good points, all of you did this evening, and um, how that goes moves forward, we'll see. Um, I was shocked, a little bit shocked today um, to hear. Um, I have five emails and three phone calls at home where residents called in and they said um, they voted no, and the reason was they thought we went too far. With Okay, maybe we did. Maybe we didn't do didn't give this uh, due diligence. Uh, okay, but they still said that they would have voted yes if it just dealt with the plovers. So it's a little humbling to um, hear that, that they would have been yes votes. Um, it's a learning curve. Um, I always wanted, as a council, want to do best, the best job I can for this town. I'm on my seventh year, and um, I, I, we've been through um, some up and ups and downs on this council in the seven years that I um, have been on it, and here, here we, you know, here we are again. And um, if we do, if you do do something like this, let's let's get it right. let's get it right. When we first started, um, I was, I sat in Tom's office, and I said. The hell with the feds. Just pay the fine and move them along. Um, as as things went along, and I got was privy to more and more information, I started to realize um, that may not be an option, and <clears throat> it may not be in this case. Again, um, <laughs> it's a tough it's a tough job sitting here as a counselor. Um, trying to make these decisions and make the right decisions for the town. Um, we uh, upset a lot of people, and it's been a heated controversy. And um, it, it, it absolutely is a tough decision. So with that being said, do I have any other discussion from any other folks? Yes, you may. I just wanted to say, and I know I've spoken about this before, um, I'm assuming that the majority of you that are here are dog people. Um, does that seem to be the majority of people that show up, which is a wonderful thing. Um, I'm assuming that if you love dogs, you would probably in that sense have a strong feeling about children and our schools. And I would like to, I would hope that, I just want to make one plea for the school. Um, there are, as hard as it is to believe, a lot of kids in this town that, um, don't have enough food or won't have enough food over the holiday. Um, there's going to be a couple areas in town where people can drop off um, food supplies. 
There will be a list that will circulate. I'm sure we can get up on the town website of items that are desperately needed. Um, what you did as a dogs group, I think, is an amazing thing. Um, I may not have agreed with some of the things that were said or some of the tactics that were taken, but you didn't agree with some of the things that I said or tactics were taken. Um, that's what kind of makes it such an amazing thing, this is democracy. That's the great thing about it. We don't have the last day, as I said before, you do. That being said, I would hope that we could take some of this energy and maybe put it towards some other things in this town that we need, are in desperate need of help. I got a couple emails over the last few weeks from some people associated with the schools, there's a, a big need right now. So if you're so inclined, um, I'm sure we'll have the information on the website, and I hope that maybe we can shift some of this um, and go in other directions with it. So I just it. Thank you. Is uh, Phil. Good thing we can just talk here. It uh, seemed to me, I was listening to say, where is the consensus? Well, uh, uh, in terms of process and action. And it just seemed to me it was, we need to move it forward, but we need to have a very public airing of uh, certainly the issues related to a town-wide ordinance. Uh, and it sounded like the ad hoc committee, I'm just gonna ask the question, is there anyone who thinks uh, an ad hoc committee couldn't contribute something constructive in a coordinated fashion with our ordinance committee. Just, you know, I just sort of put it out there so that if if people feel like uh, that's not going to be a productive idea, uh, we at least can discuss it now because I thought I heard pretty strong consensus that uh, an ad hoc committee could play a constructive role. I that make one point, that uh, that park committee would be great, wonderful, as long as it's structured right and doesn't get um, bogged down, bogged down with um, dealing with the issue. The, um, I think the biggest thing here is um, that April 1st deadline, if that, that's what I'm hearing from everyone here. So, if that's your goal to accomplish as counselors, then the, you need to, somehow we need to structure that. Yeah. Is that for, the, for, the, for both issues or just for each issue? Well, that's my question too. My question is, Tell me again, what you think. I, I think, I think, I think, there's, I think there's two separate issues. And again, the plover is one thing, and the protection of the plover. And then the town wide is another, and the and the plover is the one that you're under the hammer, so to speak, with the service. Mm -hmm. The town wide leash, or, or whatever you want to do with dogs, is secondary. Secondary, correct? To me. Yes, it is. So, and that's why I'm looking. And I, can, I, can I ask Tom? Too? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> this is good. Okay. Um, do I have to answer? <laughs> do you have to answer? <laughs> you can ask. Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, we're there was a process that took place and went up till October 2nd, I believe was the date that the vote, and then it got amended. Um, that ordinance that was on the table at that point, does that have to restart again? It does automatically. The legal effect of the mm -hmm. vote yesterday is the is everything council is okay. null and void. So you're, back to so you're back to square one. Square one yeah, when started. So square one would be first reading. You'd have to reintroduce. You'd have to reintroduce. You'd have to reintroduce. Right. You'd have to reintroduce. So right now we have the animal control ordinance that was passed in 2004, I think, is is the law in effect today. Right. And to do anything further, you'd have to reintroduce new amendments okay. and go through your document. That's what my guess right. was. Yes. Yep. That's why I needed to, I just wanted to ask that. But all of that is defined. That's all defined. I mean, we've gone through the whole process of discussing all this in public hearings and stuff like that. So we could quite easily reintroduce a plover ordinance. And what you're saying is sure. that we then have the reintroduction, the first reading, the public hearing, the second reading. Right. Uh, so we'd, we'd probably have a month or more of further consideration of the plover matter. Right. At the risk of alienating, if not annoying, Members of Council, <laughs> this will be the devil's advocate for a moment. Uh, this it, it occurs to me that this petition effort um, 
started and was in earnest uh, well before the council adopted what it finally adopted. In fact, that was kind of at the 11th hour in some respects. So it, it strikes me that there were concerns, right or wrong, with the original proposal that was poised and ready to be considered uh, in second and final reading. If part of the goal in this ad hoc committee is to provide some process and larger voice and conversation around the issues, it may serve that purpose better um, to combine the two together, not to separate them immediately, but to do it, as, as has been stated, uh, with a very uh, clear mandate, very tight timeline such that <coughs> input can be delivered back and consumed and digested, debated by council, and acted upon in advance of that March, uh, that April date. Uh, I know the Dodge Group, among other things, has had a committee doing research and, and that I, I can't imagine what else they can bring to the table, but I know it's there. So I think it might be a shame to dismiss that there might not be more information that ought to be considered. Mm -hmm. Whether there's any great revelations and it changes opinions, I don't know. That's, so I, I just offer that as a contrary mm -hmm. point. Good point. Um, yes, you're next. I was waiting patiently. <laughs> I, know. I, know um, I think the, certainly it is two issues, and I guess I should have been a little more clear on that when I was saying that um, I could support an ad hoc committee, and I think it should. And ideally, the cutoff date out of them would be for the one issue for fi you know fish and wildlife, and then the secondary issue of whether or not we do or do not look at dog parts and those sorts of things can you know that can be after. Um, I think the main thing that does need to be addressed walking out of this meeting tonight is whether or not we as a council want to have them or staff or whatever. Um, you're going to either do one of two things. We are either going to address fish and wildlife or we are going to choose not to. So we will either address them in some fashion, whether it's the previous ordinance that we talked about and discussed or a portion of that, or we are not. Um, so I think a consensus walking out of here of whether or not we are going to deal with something or we are just going to let it kind of let the chips fall would be important. I, I have a question on that. Now, you, what you're saying is, is uh, either we address uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife mm -hmm. or we start working on an ordinance again. Are those the options that you're asking mm -hmm. about? More or less. Uh, either we're going to do something that will change the ordinance, and we all agree we need to do something with the ordinance. What it is, is remains to be seen. Or we leave it as it is and let Fish and Wildlife say whatever they're going to say about it. I think you're absolutely right. We need to have uh, a direction for on the go in. Uh, that's true. We, you know, um, we're not taking action. We just, I think he needs at this point a direction to go, whether we um, address U.S. Fish and Game or we, or this new council has decided to look at redrafting an ordinance. My point is I understand the sentiment. It's been well articulated that that's an issue that um, sounds like there is somewhat of a consensus that needs to be addressed as part of this. Um, I'm just saying that there's not such immediacy that you need to initiate that at your next meeting. Um, no. I think we need to be mindful that April date will be here before we know right. it. But I don't think it's, uh, I think there's enough time for a thoughtful, deliberate discussion around the package of issues, including mm -hmm. that. It's quite likely that the other issues may spawn further further amendments of the ordinance, whether it's designating areas or so on and so forth. It doesn't make much sense to me to initiate a series of amendments to satisfy Plover and then on the heels of that to initiate another set of amendments to do other things in that ordinance if you can do it all in one fell swoop. Mm -hmm. I think we've, we have to decide as a group tonight do we support protecting the bloggers? How about you do this so you don't have to take that action? <laughs> what I could do, and I'm prepared to offer a fair and I can work with uh, some or all of you if you like, is to prepare an order that the council could consider at its next meeting, which would create this ad hoc committee. And I will need input. I can draft it and send it around for input. Mm -hmm. 
among other things that, um, whether it's in the formal mandate, but uh, in the whereas clauses, you could clearly articulate that it's the, uh, just taking off the top of my head, it's the interest of this council to minimize and reduce risk to the town and, and to provide um, appropriate protections to endangered species. I mean, that sends a statement to this group. It doesn't tell them it's off limits, but it indicates this council, because you will have the final decision, uh, feels that those issues are very important and be mindful, committee, in your work of those issues. Again, at the end of the day, the U7 councilors will make the decision based on their recommendations. Well, I, I thought perhaps Jessica was getting at a point that Tom was making. Uh, Tom's point, I thought, was that <clears throat> giving the opportunity for an ad hoc committee to have input on uh, including the plover issue. And Jessica, I thought, was talking about maybe a staged process that, that a committee, if formed, may have as its first priority the assessment of, of whether or not there are other ways in which you can look at this other than April 1 to August 31 off leash. That, that is the federal government's guideline. Uh, and that's what we're being asked to. Now, I am concerned that this process is going to drag through uh, our very important part of the year involving budgets. I think that's a, that is so critical that to allow it to go after it's been heard for five months already, uh, for months and months, knowing that we're, we're stuck with a process that takes several months to get an ordinance adopted. So, uh, why can't this go back to ordinance and ordinance work with Tom and representatives of the other group? That way it's kind of being not on top of the whole entire council, because I don't know if that's necessary at this point. We still have to bring it back to the full council for it to, for it to go anywhere. Where it's a smaller group, I feel like then it's a little more informal. We can work with representatives because we know how strongly these guys feel. We're, we're certainly not going to shut people out of the process at this point, and that group can then in turn work with Tom. I just mm. wonder if maybe, mm. I don't think we all have to be in the kitchen right now. I guess that's well, what I feel. And I, then I feel like we're not, we're not rushing and we're not pushing because I feel a little, I, just, I don't want to make agree with you. rush decisions right now. I just, I'm not. No. So I'm just wondering, no. do you have any feelings on that? Or, oh, well, no, I, I, I do think that the Ordinance Committee can act uh, very much in it, the sort of informal fashion that an ad hoc committee would, uh, would act to be able to have full open discussion of all the options that are available so that people, now, I don't know if there are new ideas. After four or five months, right. I I'm new to the council, but I would have thought, that whatever could be brought forward would have been brought forward. Uh, and all of you were, were pretty solid that the, way, the plover protection was a, smart, was a smart thing to do. So. Right, but speaking from being at those ordinance meetings, this didn't really become a hot button item until we moved on to full council meetings. We, we did not have at our okay. ordinance meetings, I mean, if I'm speaking no, about no. Um we did not have the kind of input that we can access now at those meetings. This is a completely different ball game now with a different council too. I mean, that's to be real. I mean, this is now a new group. They have more representation. We have different representation. So I'm wondering if there can be more of a dialogue, maybe more, a little bit more informal. Um, I'm just wondering if that's an easier way to try to get maybe some of this stuff through without having to create I get a little frustrated sometimes with committee, 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 committee. I, sometimes I feel like you somewhere in that you miss something. So I just I, can I interject I something here? Yeah. It has to do with this. Go ahead, um, I, I can understand both sides of the ordinance committee and ad hoc. The way the reason I come down on the side of the ad hoc committee, to me, I see an ad hoc committee is technically can be more focused. You've got different parties involved and you have an actual dialogue that's going on. You can make an ad hoc committee time limited 
and you can give it specific instructions on what you want it to accomplish. And it doesn't have to be every member of the council on an ad hoc committee. It can be one member of the council, whatever we decide we want to do. As opposed to the ordinance committee, which I see as a more formalized situation, which tends to be more uh, people are presenting to the ordinance committee as opposed to a dialogue going on. I know it doesn't have to be that way, but that's usually the way it, 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 it happens. Um, and, I mean, I don't know what the new committee look up. I guess I'm going to find out tonight what the new yes, committees and whatever yes, sure. are going to look like. But, you know, you have so, it would be good to have some new players. Mm -hmm. Nothing against the past ordinance committee. You guys did a yeoman's job in what you did and yeah. took a lot of heat. But I think coming from a fresh committee and ad, so that's why you have ad hoc, right. being a Latin teacher, I mean, it's for this purpose only, yep. um, that I think you can accomplish more. That's my opinion. Okay. Um, we have, what, eight minutes left? Oh, we're going to say eight minutes left. Um, you're making great progress. Keep going. Any? Um, um, I, I wanted to pick up on a suggestion Tom made. Uh, it does seem to me that it would make sense for uh, the chair and the vice chair to work with Tom to begin to put together what would be a proposal for a ad hoc committee, yep. what their role would be, what their time frame would be, uh, uh, what the composition would be. Uh, <clears throat> that would then be shared with the seven of us so that we'd be able to have the opportunity to provide input to it, uh, and uh, uh, and we'll we'll go from there. I think uh, we have expressed our point of view that on the April one plover issue, that's some urgency. On the others, there's probably some more time. I thought Jessica was suggesting some stage decision making within the ad hoc committee that would allow for uh, ordinance to get off and running so that it does not become inordinately delayed mm -hmm. and interferes with the whole spring schedule, winter and spring schedule of the, of the board. Jessica, did you have some? He's volunteering to be the liaison. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get that. I thought you were. <laughs> <laughs> so, here, what I'm gathering from the group of councils here is that um, you want to formulate a ad hoc committee um, with a set of goals uh, to be accomplished as you know as soon as possible, and um, and we want to look. It sounds like a consensus to me at the clover issue. Oh, why did I, I thought it was my hearing aid. No, your phone was just for microphone breaks. My hearing aid does that once in a while. <laughs> I hear you. They call it white noise. <laughs> <laughs> I love white noise. I have that pink Okay, so the consensus then is is uh, also to look at a, the uh, Plover ordinance, not. I would say there's a difference between animal control ordinance and yeah. the flow. It's own separate yeah. ordinance, if I remember call. Yeah. Yeah. Or well, we do have uh, no, an ordinance. Uh, the real teeth for enforcement purposes resides in the animal control the ordinance, animal but control. they are in concert with one another. Well, I just want to make that clear to yep. mm -hmm. everyone yep. here involved. Huh. So what I'm hearing is is we want to look at the NAD mm -hmm. and we also want to look at um, – the, the plover ordinance, uh, the plover part of it only. Yeah, I can envision the committee being tasked with kind of two tiers of analysis. The yeah. first is with a quicker, mm -hmm. earlier report date is the plover issue, and then some further time to mm -hmm. uh, for all the others. And yeah. I've heard, and I've also heard no mention here of um, of uh, open dialogue with U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Because we don't like them, right? <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, I <laughs> Fair enough. But I, I, I sound that well, you've gotten some direction then. Well, just on that point, it sounds as though um, generally what you're talking about is still consistent or, or not inconsistent yet with the basic terms of the settlement agreement. And I think 
I would like to entertain the thought we'll, that we'll still strive uh, toward that. We'll know when we get there. Right. Again, I don't expect they're going to take, I'll have a registered letter waiting on my desk tomorrow that they're taking action against us, particularly if they show progress, uh, formation of a committee, uh, structure, so on and so forth. I, I think that will be well received and buy us some time. And, and, I, and one thing in the uh, agreement under uh, seven under the reopener clause, there is that reopener clause in it where it does, it's like a five year window. Right. And there does seem to be some flexibility in there with the maze and the whatever and the whatever. So as this long as we're making progress. The word repeal, this whole scenario was contemplated at the time this agreement was drafted and, and approved. Um, so in some sense, no surprise we find ourselves here. Molly, guess now I know what it feels like to be the minority. Yeah. I'd, I'd just like to suggest that we start the process of, if we're going to have an ad hoc committee, and I think we've all agreed with that, that we start the process of accepting um, nominations or people that want to be on there. I mean, we, we've got to start moving on this stuff. We can't just wait until the next meeting to have some sort of a order that we're going to take a look at and approve. Let's get moving on this stuff right away. Uh, Jean Marie, did you have something else? No. Oh, okay. Um, and it goes to um, Jessica, which was on the. Uh, uh, <coughs> the composition of the committee? Yeah. As far as. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Nominations? Of, nominations, right. No, I'm sorry. Nominations. Um, is, is there a way that you want to deal with that? Is, you know, much as I was being mean to Fish and Wildlife, I, certainly I would think that they would need to, if they're willing to, um, provide somebody to be participating on this. Um, although I don't think their provision position will move, um, certainly a representative if they're so willing. Um, I would suspect <laughs> probably community services, mm. uh, you know, a staff member that I'm assuming that their involvement is at the bare minimum, even if you know, the report says ixnay on designated anything and just apply for pullovers, that's still going to have an effect for, for community service, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so Fish and Wildlife, community service, I would think um, a representative perhaps out of the dogs group. Um, I don't know, would we want a member from PD to be involved? Is it to the you know, they certainly have the enforcement aspects of it, if, if there was a representative in there, or a VIP, or, or, but something in the law enforcement branch. Um, am I missing? Garber Land Trust. The Land Trust. Um, I would think maybe Eastern Trail, perhaps. Um, it is, um, I mean, where are we at? Yeah. It, I would... Right. The uh, Eastern Trail um, from Black Point Road, I believe, is the... Mm -hmm. Blue Point Road, <coughs> or, uh, I'm trying to think where the dogs are too. So is under the control of I F and W, oh, and well. they already have a clover hmm. ordinance on the trail of dogs need to be on a leash from April 1st to October 1st. Oh yes, we know how they feel. And uh, mm -hmm. when I was speaking with with the uh, representative, uh, the biologist, uh, mm -hmm. she she was. Uh, Willing to do the 15th with the beaches, okay. you know, and because uh, they they have a strict ordinance on their properties. And I would think the magic number because you do come to a point where you get so many and it becomes so unruly and you can't get through the work. So for me personally, I would think an absolute maximum would be seven and, and somewhere in that five. You also have the dynamic of people have lives outside of these things, so, you know, you get one person that's out one day and you need quorum to meet, so, especially in the short timetable, so, um, I would think a resident at large, maybe. Bill, did you have something? Well, I was thinking that m smaller might be more, you know, light on their feet, being able to move forward, and that some of the things that uh, Jessica was referencing are clearly people of interest, but they may be uh, appropriate to provide input Correct. Yeah. to the uh, 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 really act yeah. as resources 
so they they would come in and if you're talking about the eastern trail or the land trust they would be able to tell you exactly the degree of flexibility that that those institutions have but they may not want to stick around for a whole series of issues that really aren't related to them right. mm -hmm. and i could see how there would be several issues that, that so I could see how you could formulate. I, I remember hearing the dogs people that stakeholders is, is kind of an important thing, and I could see uh, somebody who is environmentally conscious is, is very concerned about the fate of the plovers, might be an appropriate person, person from dogs, very concerned about uh, uh, dog owners' rights. That, that seems like an appropriate person. So I could see how you the chair, the vice chair, and, and, and the town manager could, could kind of work that out and we could provide input and further thoughts and the days, because I completely agree with Ed, that the more we can be light on our feet and move this forward, the more I think the community would say, that's the way it ought to be handled. Okay. Um, the question came from Jessica today, do we really need an hour? We're past an hour. <laughs> so we'll, um, we'll have to uh, conclude this because it's on to the uh, council meeting, the regular. Just, just, just one comment. I thought tonight was outstanding, and we ought to consider doing this once a month. Absolutely. That's what I hope to uh, intend to uh, accomplish, some more workshops and uh, just kind of form to bring the uh, council uh, Post together and maybe uh, so no one will feel left out. And there's another thing left out of the uh, conversation. I was asked to um, if every, we could take a five minute break, so we're going to start the regular meeting a little late. So um, everybody can take five minutes. We'll take it late.